So in this video, we're going to talk about dynamic reloading. Um, dynamic reloading is is the process of you know looking for changes in your files and automatically rebuilding the server and rerunning it. This isn't something you're going to want to use in production. Um, it's very very rare to have that useful in production, but it is something for local development. It's very helpful for. So I'm going to go ahead and just show this to you because it, it makes way more sense when you see it in action. Um, first, I'm going to start the server up. If I go back here, refresh the page, I've got welcome to my awesome site. If I change this to welcome to my bad site, for example, come back here and reload, you'll notice that nothing changed. It still says awesome. So this is because we don't have dynamic reloading. I have to manually go into the terminal, stop the server, and restart it. Now that I've restarted it, it'll say welcome to my bad site. Um, and similarly, if I go back and change this back to the way it was, you won't see the changes until you, you know, stop the server and restart it. So this is something that can be tedious, especially when you're making a lot of changes. So we're going to use a library that helps us do some hot reloading. So the library we're going to use is called Fresh. I'm going to go ahead and bring it up here. It's github.com slash pilu slash fresh. This library is, it's, it's nice for, you know, looking for file changes and restarting your Go application, but there are a couple issues that we'll have to talk about, um, and we'll go over those here momentarily. But first, I just want to sort of walk you through getting it installed and getting it running so you can see what it does. So it has the installation line here. It's a go get, and then you type in github.com slash pilo slash fresh. So I'm going to stop my server. I'm going to go get this application. So once it's you know, done installing it, you should be able to just type fresh and it should start running. So this starts up a couple different Go routines. Um, the thing to pay attention to is that it's, it's going to listen for changes in your directory, it's going to ignore things in the temp directory, and it's going to, you know, build and rerun the server every time it sees a file change. So I can go here and I can refresh. We've got welcome to my awesome site. If I change this to super awesome, hit refresh, you can see that it updated automatically. So if we go back to our terminal, we can see that this noticed uh, you know, some changes in our main.go file, and it sent the event saying that there are changes. It built the server again and ran it again. So this is what's going on throughout this whole thing. It's gonna be rebuilding the server and rerunning it every time it sees a change. The downside to this is, well, there's two of them. <laughs> the first one is that if, if you want certain files to you know, cause a rebuild, for example, if we wanted our, our templates to cause a rebuild, we need to make sure Fresh knows about that type of file. The second potential issue is if we have a compilation error, for example, let's say I do format.dog. So fumpt doesn't have a dog function, so this is going to result in a compilation error. And then we put hello. Welcome to my super awesome site. So I save this. You can see that there's definitely a build error. If I come back here and refresh, the page still loads, <clears throat> but it doesn't show anything new. So this is where Fresh can be somewhat confusing. Um, as long as it can't build a new version, it continues running the last version that built correctly. So the reason this is confusing is the page might be loading, and if we have a bunch of different web pages, we might not realize that it's just not showing us the new version because we didn't really pay attention to our logs to see what happened. So this is where Fresh is at, you know, it's a double-sided or double-edged blade. Um, it's great for speeding up development, but it can also like cause a lot of confusion and issues if you don't realize that, oh, it wasn't able to build. So if you, if you decide to use Fresh, the one thing I will say is that you will need to pay attention to the logs and you will need to sort of see if things aren't building correctly because it's not always obvious that, that it didn't happen. So let me go fix up this build error and change this all back to the way it was. We're building correctly. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and we have a clean branch. So I'm gonna check out uh, a new branch. We're gonna do, I think this is 2.3. I don't really remember right now, but uh, maybe it's 2.4 dynamic. Whoa. Yeah, let me put a dash here. 
that how I did them all? Yes, it is. All right, so we're in this new branch. Um, I don't know if it's supposed to be 2.4 or 2.3. I'll change it later if I need to. So we're in this new branch. Uh, the name of it is kind of whatever you want it to be, but I'm just going to call it 2.4 dynamic reloading. So now that we're in this branch, we're going to, the next thing we're going to do is the second issue that I haven't talked about with Fresh, um, is you need to, well, I, I sort of did, you need to tell it which files to actually pay attention to. So the first thing I'm going to say is that Fresh has a default configuration. You can see it right here. So this default configuration shows the valid extensions. It's got Go, TPL, Temple, and HTML. And then there's these no rebuild extensions, which are you know the, the HTML type ones. I There are times when you want it to rebuild on those changes, and there are times when you don't. I prefer to have my application rebuild whenever templates are changed. Um, and I say that because, as you'll see later, my templates tend to uh, you know, tend to be something that get built right at the start of the application and they don't get dynamically reloaded throughout the application. So the upside to this is my code runs fast because it's, you know, it's not taking changes to those files. It's just building them once and then it uses the templates the rest of the time. The downside to this is whenever they change, it doesn't necessarily get hot reloads from them. So we need to tell Fresh to, you know, use our, you know, rebuild every time we change our templates. So we're going to create a file called runner.conf. Oh, sorry, Adam runner.conf. I'm going to paste the, the the sample one they had there. Um, I'm going to add. First, we're going to start at line 14. I'm going to add bold white as the the app color. This will be the color that our um, any logs that we print out with our application will be in this color. So I think bold white is the one that I want. Uh, the build delay. I'm going to go ahead and spill this or speed this up to, to 300. Um, depending on your computer and your, your personal preference, 600 is probably fine. I, we'll just leave it at 600. That's fine. Um, the next thing we want to do is I'm going to add a valid extension. So I use .go HTML as my template extension. So I'm going to add that here so that it knows to pay attention to these files and actually listen for changes. And then on the no rebuild extension line, I'm just going to delete that entire line because I don't want it to, I want it to rebuild on any changes. So I think that's everything. We can save this. Um, now we can type in fresh, and it should be using that file now. We can actually test this if you want. We, if we change this 600 to 300, um, you know, hit fresh, you can see that it's sleeping for 300 milliseconds now. So that's the easiest way to sort of test and see if it's working correctly is just you know, tweak that build delay, and you should get an idea of whether or not it's taking your changes in and using it. All right, so now that we have that, um, I think that's everything we need right now for Fresh. We won't be doing Go HTML templates just yet, but you know, you, you want to have an idea of how it works. And I guess the last thing I probably should show you is I'm going to go ahead and do format.println. Someone visited our page. So this right here is I'm printing out to just standard out. Um, this is where I said that bold white color is going to come into play. Whenever we start up our server and visit the page, every time we visit this page, it prints this out to not to the page, but to the, you know, the terminal. So if you go back to the, you know, the logs, you can see that the app is white and it types the someone visit our page. So our logs are going to be mixed in here with the fresh logs. So it's, you need to pay attention to that. It's sometimes confusing, but it's usually pretty easy to follow. The last thing we need to do before we you know, end this video is we need to commit our changes. Um, we've been sort of doing this git flow all along, so I'm going to go ahead and just show you that we've got a git status. Uh, I'm going to type git diff, and this will show us differences between our files. You can see that I've got this print line statement. Uh, we don't need to keep that, so I'm actually going to go back here and just get rid of it. Um, now if I type git status, I'll see that all I have is the new runner.config file. Or Conf. So I'm going to git add dash a git commit um, added a fresh config file. All right, so that's all we need. I'm going to check out master and I'm going to merge in the changes we just did. And I'm going to push to origin master. So this is going to push it to our, our GitLab repo that we're storing code in. 
so that it's you know persisted online as well as locally. So all of our code was pushed there. Um, that should be everything we need. Uh, as I said before, this is a kind of a double-edged blade, so I probably won't be using Fresh throughout these books because I'll know when to rebuild and things like that. So the first follow-through, at least, I'd, I'd probably suggest not really using this, but I at least wanted to show it to you because when I first was learning Go, it's one of the things that you know, I really liked having some way to dynamically reload my code. 